Hello SimHub users, this is the 11th video in a series of tutorials on using Dash Studio within SimHub. Today we're going to be looking at the button component. And buttons can trigger certain events within our dashboard and the SimHub interface. I'll show you how to add them and some interesting events that you might want to bind to those button presses. To add a button is simple. We click on the button in the component list on the left and we'll drag that over here to the right. There is already a built-in button image and there's just one in the common library, but if you wanted to make your own or change the color of this or download some from online and use them, you can change the image and pressed image here. So each button has an image, meaning it's not pressed, and a pressed image. So the pressed image, you can see that it's kind of indented there. So we'll stick with those defaults there and let's change its properties. So I'm going to demonstrate several different events we could use with this button and so I'm not going to give it a specific name like volume up button, I'll just call it tutorial button. One interesting thing we can do with a button is simulate a key press. So these are all of the different characters on a keyboard that could be pressed. So if instead of reaching for your keyboard, you just wanted to press a soft button on your dashboard, you can assign that to any one of these. One thing to note is that there's a difference between high level button presses and low level button presses. So say that page down in your SIM that you're running does something like decreases the brake bias. And if you assign that here, and you go in game and you press that and realize it's not working, that's sometimes because the SIM needs to have an actual physical button press from a keyboard instead of an emulated one from an application like SimHub. So if you're having a problem with that, that could be the issue there. High level versus low level button presses. And you can do some more research on that yourself. Simulated key press time is how many milliseconds that it will be assumed that the button has been pressed down. That's another thing, if your SIM is not recognizing the button press, you could modify this. But what we're going to be looking at here are trigger actions. And I have some additional ones in here since I have some plugins installed. But some of the ones that I've found interesting and useful in dashboards that I've created are volume controls. So there's game volume, which you can increment and decrement, and there's also system volume. That's gonna be your system-wide Windows volume. And having a button on your dashboard that can modify your system volume is kind of useful. Other useful ones are this decrement red line and increment red line. You can set a red line value in SimHub as a percentage of your total RPMs and that's done in the main SimHub application under car settings. But you might realize that you want your red line to be a little higher in a car that you're driving, and maybe you use that red line value to flash the dashboard red or to create a beep and tell you when to shift. And if that's off, it's nice to be able to modify that on the fly. And so having a button on your dashboard that can increment and decrement your red line is useful. Other useful buttons on your dashboard could be for next screen and previous screen. If you have a multi-screen dashboard, and we will get into multi-screen dashboards in a future video. And this one's useful as well, discard current map. And we will talk about track maps in the next video. And track maps actually are not pre-existing within SimHub. You actually need to run a clean lap for SimHub to generate the map for you. But if when it's doing that, say you had a bad off track and you skidded far, the problem is that your track map is now going to reflect that. And so having a button on your dashboard that can discard the current map will allow you to recreate that from scratch again. So I'll use that discard current map trigger action as my button and then with my dashboard running, that button can now be pressed and when we click it, we see that depressed icon. And if this were on a dashboard with a touchscreen like a Vocor or a USB D480, pressing this with your finger would do the same thing and trigger that action of clearing the current map. 